Hi, and welcome to the session on Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. In this session, we will take a look at Power BI as an overview. We'll take a look at some sample dashboards that are created by Power BI that come straight out of the box as standard. And then we'll take a quick look at how we can edit Power BI dashboards and also how we can embed reports from other data sources. So what we'll do first is just take a look at one of the standard dashboards. In this case, I'll scroll down and run perhaps the CFO workspace. So we click on the CFO overview, which will then fire up Power BI and the various objects. So what you're looking at is the CFO Power BI standard object with Dynamics Finance and Operations. Uh, which is the future effectively of the reporting for AX and for the Dynamics Suite. So in this we can see that we have a financial overview, so we can see how the business is going. We can potentially take a look at revenue and expense insights. In this case we've got objects shown as revenue by region and revenue and expenses, expense by category and expenses by region. Uh, I might be curious about subledger insights in this case, I can look at my top 10 products, I can look at my top 10 customers by revenue, and so on and so forth. As mentioned, this comes out of the box. The creation of the data for it can either be batched, so that it's updated periodically, say every few minutes, or it can be run in real time. Uh, if I just click a little bit further along, I can see that I might want to look at my trial balance or my balance sheet my income statements, so on, so forth. If we just drop back to say the Subledger Insights, we can of course filter by opening this pane on the right hand side, in that at the moment I'm looking at the entire organization, but I might say no, I really am interested in filtering that and just looking at a specific organization or a specific date range or a specific calendar, uh, and so on and so forth. I can also click and drill down, I can expand certain areas if you want to take a look at them and return back to the report. Uh, I'll just fire up one more example and, and give you an idea of, in this case, say the project management for those familiar with the project module within finance and operations. Um, as you can see, this did not go directly into Power BI. Uh, it went into our workspace where I can see my projects. But if I click on the analytics, that fires up Power BI. It's all embedded within finance and operations, so you're not running different versions of software. In this case, I've got my projects overview, so I can take a look perhaps at the percentage of work complete for each project, how many billable hours, uh, and what my cost performance index ratio is. I can look at revenue by customer. Uh, I might be curious to take a look at costings. Uh, I might be curious to take a look at revenue. Uh, I might be look interested in looking at the hours that we're spending on these projects and doing some analysis. Again, as with all Power BI, we can click on the filters button and I might be just interested in certain project types, in this case, time and material, but I'm just looking for cost or FP or whatever. Or I might want to do it by resource and just pick out individual resources that are working on the project and do analysis by individual resources or groups of resources. What we'll take a look at next is that I will run the uh, credit and collections function and the intent now is to show you how easy it is to actually modify existing and standard um, Power BI reports but also how easy it is to embed from other data sources so if I fire up the customer credit and collection pick out the analytics or companies then you can see that I have a Power BI dashboard I might want to modify this. So what I can do is click on options, click on edit analytics, and what that will do is fire up the end user editor. So in this case, I might want to change the visualizations or the colors or the ranges or change the way the object's portrayed. So instead of a pie chart, I might want a bar chart or a scatter diagram or, or, or whatever. Or I might want to pick out a specific object such as this one and decide I want to add additional data. So 
I might want to look at the collection status and say, you know, I want to see the due date. I want to be able to see the customer's name and actually break it down. And that's as simple as clicking on these options. I can also change filters, add filters uh, and save it. Once that's done, that report is available for everybody. Uh, another powerful option is that I can duplicate the page. So I might want to copy it and then make changes to it or so on. So I'll just close that down. The other option, of course, is that I might want to take this particular Power BI dashboard and add a new object. Very easy to add a new object that reports on Dynamics 365 finance and operations data. But we can also pull data in from other systems and other data sources. The Power BI offering is completely data independent and source independent. So for this example, I'll click on options, but this time I'm going to select analytics. And what that will do is open up my workspaces at powerbi.com. The thing you'll notice is that I've loaded my libraries with business central objects, formerly known as Navision. So what I might want to do is pull one of these objects directly into Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. If I go back and rerun my customer credit and collections, rerun my analytics, this time instead I have actually now got information being pulled through from Business Central as opposed to Dynamics. We can pull data in through Power BI, we can merge it, and the data can come from anything as simple as an Excel spreadsheet, all the way through to a Navision system or Business Central or Finance and Operations. I hope you found that session useful. And of course, if you want any more information on Power BI, please get in touch with Microchannel and we'll only be too happy to help.